Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Borg Warner. Feel good about driving. Bridgestone, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. And by Hyundai, new thinking, new possibilities. In today's AutoLine Daily, superchargers have been around for over 100 years, but electric superchargers? Now there's a new one. Also, Toyota shows off its anti-electric car strategy, and dealers who answer your emails quickly may not make the sale. Now let's get to the news. Last year, Ford sold nearly 130,000 Edge CUVs in the U.S. market. But it wants to grow that number with the all-new 2015 model that will now be sold in markets outside of North America. Amazingly, the new Edge is based on the same global platform as the Fusion, which Ford says gives it a more solid body structure and better performing suspension. The exterior has been completely reworked with more pronounced character lines and, of course, it gets the automaker's new signature grill. There are three engine options available for North America, a 2-liter turbocharged 4, a 2.7-liter turbocharged V6, and a 3.5-liter V6. Both EcoBoost engines are new power plants. The 2015 Edge will be sold exclusively with a 2-liter diesel in Europe. The interior is all new as well, as you may have guessed. It has a bunch of new technology across all the trim levels. However, it remains to be seen if it will be offered in Europe's Vignale luxury trim. Even if it's not, Ford still plans on competing with other luxury vehicles in the Asia-Pacific and European markets with the top-level titanium package. It'll hit American showrooms in the first quarter of 2015 and will follow with Europe, South America, and then Asia-Pacific, including China. The French supplier Vallejo says it has landed a contract with a major European automaker to introduce its electric supercharger on a front-wheel drive car in 2016. Vallejo won't say who that is, but since it released this video of the system on a Dacia Duster, we're guessing that's who it is. The 48-volt system provides instant boost in less than 300 milliseconds, allows for packaging flexibility since it does not have to be driven off a belt and can also be used on diesel engines. Vallejo is selling the electric supercharger as a way to reduce CO2 emissions when combined with engine downsizing. But there could be a performance play here too. Honda is using one on the Acura NSX. It will run at the Pikes Peak International Hill Climb later this month. Could this be a test of the production version of the new NSX's powertrain? We're going to want to watch that race. Toyota and Elon Musk are in a war of words. Toyota says it doesn't see much of a future for battery electric cars, while Elon calls fuel cells fool cells and says they're, and I'm quoting here, a load of rubbish. Well, Toyota just threw down its gauntlet announcing the price of its fuel cell car. You can pick one up next year in Japan for only 7 million yen. That's nearly $68,000 at today's exchange rate. And it's going to have a range of 700 kilometers. That's about 430 miles. But that's based on Japan's JC08 test, which is a lot easier than the US EPA's FTP75 test. Most importantly, the car can be completely refueled in three minutes. So why is that so important? We're going to give you the ABCs tomorrow of how California's zero emission vehicle program works. In fact, we'll explain in plain language why automakers are so committed to selling EVs and fuel cell cars, even though they have no hope of making any money on them. First is always best, right? Well, it may not be when you're talking about dealerships responding to online customer sales leads. According to data gathered by DealerSocket, a response time of 16 to 20 minutes had the highest closing rate at nearly 5.5%. That's 23% better than dealerships that responded within 15 minutes. The data even showed that waiting 31 to 60 minutes has better results than those who responded in 15 minutes. I guess it goes to show that waiting and having a well thought out response is much more effective than just being the first one into the pool. Coming up next, it's time for You Said It! 
Here's one of the great things about the all-around performance of our jeweler tires. Excellent traction. Do you need a ladder? Yes, I do. Okay. At Bridgestone, our passion for performance knows no bounds. And now it's time for some of your feedback. SeaTech heard our report that Cadillac sales are languishing this year and how it's in danger of being outsold by Audi in the U.S. market. Cadillac needs to bite the bullet and lower their prices. It may also help to continue to offer a wagon and coupe CTS. Build great cars, take a smaller profit, and you'll take back market share. That and, I would add, a CUV sized below the SRX would be better than I think keeping the wagon. But remember, the new Escalade has just hit the market and there is an ATS coupe on the way. That's going to help, but Cadillac's biggest problem is that it does not yet have the full lineup that can compete with the German luxury brands. Marshall saw our report that the new Volvo S60 is getting rid of buttons and going with a touchscreen. Funny, Volvo used to be all about safety. With buttons and knobs, I can easily operate the radio and climate control by touch, never having to take my eyes off the road. This touchscreen nonsense is a backward move for Volvo. But then, what would you expect from a Chinese-owned company? Well, don't blame the Chinese, Marshall. All the styling and engineering decisions at Volvo are still made in Sweden. Or <laughs> at least that's what they keep telling us. RS does not like the idea of a battery-powered Harley Davidson. Electric Harley? No! I would miss the pipes! Well, personally, I think it would be a mistake for the company to come out with an electric motorcycle using the Harley Davidson brand. Maybe they'll prove me wrong, but I think this is more of a branding issue than a technological one. SeaTech heard our report that yellow and orange cars have better resale value, and he thinks he knows why. Usually, a yellow or orange car is a special edition, most likely with more options. A hugger orange Camaro gets more bids than a silver one. A yellow Bumblebee Camaro is worth more than a black Camaro. And that is a great point, SeaTech. Thanks for the insight. Pedro Fernandez heard our report that the notorious new car smell often includes fumes from plastic, foam, and glue that automakers are trying to get rid of. Well, there goes another reason for buying a new car versus a used one. No more new car smell. Oh, honey, but I love that new car smell. Out the window, baby. Well, it may not be completely gone, but that new car smell will not be as noticeable in the future. Hey, thanks for all your comments and letters. We truly enjoy reading them all. And don't forget, tomorrow night, John Kraftcheck is our guest on Auto Line After Hours. He's the former CEO of Hyundai Motors America and now the president of True Car. Anyway, that wraps up today's show. Thank you for watching.